Good morning, everyone. Looking forward to sharing with you this morning. We're just going to give it a few moments just as people start to um, join us online for church, Inspire at Home live edition. Make sure, hey, as you're joining, if you can hit the, um, the share button just so our Inspire family can get a hold of it. I'm gonna do that at the same time. Where are we? Share. Here we go. Awesome, how are we going? Good morning, Ashley and Jessica. Yeah, church, feel free to use the comment section. I can actually see this, so this is good. It makes me feel like we are gathering together even though we are in our separate homes. Hey Rose, hey Bridget. Good morning to all of our Inspire family and everyone else who's joining us. This is exciting. Who's had the coffee already this morning? Hey Carrie, surely Carrie you've had a good coffee this morning. I've already had two. <laughs> So my body is charging with caffeine. Tell us where you're um, streaming from. I'm really interested to know. I'm in our dining room, so maybe you're in your living room. Maybe you haven't even made it out of bed yet. Good to see Carrie's had some great coffee too. Good morning, Stan. Hey, that's awesome, Rose, doing some pet sitting. Straight into brekkie. Thanks, Simon, on commenting on this shirt. I love this shirt too. <laughs> hey, also a massive shout out. It's Pastor Julia's birthday today. So make sure you comment below um, and say happy birthday. In fact, who thinks that we should sing happy birthday, even though maybe I'm the only voice that's going to be heard? Yep, seeing a couple of likes here. Um, let's go. I want to encourage you as we sing happy birthday, sing at home because then it feels like we're singing together. If you don't, it's going to sound like I'm going to do a solo. But because Pastor Julie is worth it, here we go. So happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Julia. Happy birthday to you. Hip hip hooray! Also a massive birthday shout out to Devin Vitale. His birthday was on Thursday. Um, also I hear it was Marcus Plummer's birthday this week as well. So happy birthday to you too. Hey, have you guys dressed up for church this morning? Tell me in the comments. I've put on, as Simon said, a good shirt. I hope you guys have dressed up. I guess that's the beauty of church at home is that you can um, turn up in your PJs if you want, your bathrobe. You could wear a shirt and not worry about wearing good pants or anything like that. I just want to confirm that um, it's a bit hard to see hidden in the corner, but I'm wearing my jeans this morning and shoes. I wanted to feel like I was ready to go. So unlike one time when I went to the tennis and I saw TV One um, broadcasting live and uh, um, the guy going live was in a jacket, a shirt, and then boardies and jandals because you wouldn't see it. <laughs> oh, good on you, Carrie, for wearing your Inspire 1999 tee. Awesome. Yes, so Roger, you're absolutely right. We had an awesome time at the zoo yesterday. Uh, lots of people from church, lots of families. It was a, a whole lot of fun walking around, checking out the animals, running into each other, uh, doing dinner together, only to get home and discover that um, we were going into lockdown again. So that's why this morning is a little bit different. We are live streaming from my phone in the dining room uh, as we haven't had an opportunity to pull together our normal online service. But hey, this is fine and this is great.
Cool, great to see a few more people joining in. We are gonna start in a couple of minutes. I just wanna leave some room for people to be able to find the stream and, and be part of it. Um, also, on that, just a massive shout out to everybody who joined in Friday and Saturday to help with a whole lot of renovations taking place in our building. Thank you so much for your time. I know there was a, a bunch of people painting yesterday. Uh, big thanks. And how good that um, we were able to celebrate our 22nd birthday as a church physically last week. Big thank you to everybody who um, helped with facilitating a live service and the online service so that we could do that um, together in level two. It was so cool to be able to um, do team night together, do the lighting event together. And hey, we're back in level three. Um, I know that might be frustrating for some, but let's see this as an opportunity, okay? Awesome. Okay. I think it's about time to start. Who reckons we get into this? Awesome. So, you know, whether you are watching live right now, whether you are going to join in later, um, you know, we see this every week. We are over 24 hours. Not only do we see church family getting involved, but we see people from pretty much all around the world. So whether you are joining us from Vietnam or whether you are the people who are joining from um, Manchester that we see, welcome. Um, and I want to pray with everybody who is joining in, whether it's live right now or later. Um, God, I just want to thank you that you were good, that you were loving, and that you were faithful. Lord, I want to thank you that we can use technology to join together this morning and gather God, just to not only focus on you, uh, but Lord, to receive something from you. God, I thank you that this morning that you want to lift our faith. Lord, I want to thank you that this morning you want to instill hope, that God, you want to, people to feel your love and understand your goodness. And I pray that in this moment, that Lord, that you would be with us and that you would make us aware of your presence with us. And Lord, we just pray for your transformative power, God, whether, wherever we are, whether we're in a bedroom, uh, a living room, the dining room, whether maybe we're on the other side of the world and we're on a, a bus or a train, wherever, God, I pray that you would be present with us in this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. I love it. Shane, Barefoot Church this morning. <laughs> So, um, this morning is obviously going to be a little bit different. So we had um, a service planned where we were going to talk about team, different places you could serve. And as many of you guys had noticed, Kim was going to join me. Now, unfortunately, Kim can't join me this morning because when you're in lockdown, it's a little bit harder to manage having little kids running all around the place. So we thought we're gonna divide and conquer. So Kim is with the kids and I am in the dining room, hopefully not gonna be interrupted, asked for food or something like that, um, sharing. So um, another time we're gonna do it where Kim joins me um, and we share together. But I thought this morning what we'd do is a little bit of a recap on the season that we're on um, and a little bit from the last couple of weeks, especially since I know that since we are live, there's gonna be people joining who haven't been part of the last two services and they might be wondering what is going on. Uh, maybe you're joining this morning and you've actually never been to church or opened up this chapter we're preaching out of, out of Luke 5, and it just sounds strange to you. That is why I'm going to do a little bit of a recap so you feel like you're on the same page as everyone else. And then what I want to do is continue the theme. So I really love that um, in the same chapter, there's an incredible story that shows us just how God loves to work with people to bring about his purpose. And I really believe that this morning that it will instill faith. You know, not only 
in any impossible situation you might be in right now or um, maybe it's just the uncertainty of going back into lockdown again but in that moment I believe that God wants to instill faith and I want you to understand that God is working. Who reckons that sounds good? Give me a like, give me a love, whatever those reactions are. You guys ready to go? It's kind of like reactions are almost like the, um, the, the people encouraging you in the service. <laughs> when someone goes amen or preach it or let's go. Awesome, thank you. Means I know you're listening. Cool, so what a week. Um, you know, we've been shifting through alert levels um, and it totally reminded me how the time that we live in right now, just something shifted. And I think that is probably the understatement of this century, that something has shifted. We have transitioned into a new normal. I'm really sorry to say that we are not heading back into what things used to be like. We are in a new normal. It is a new normal now, like this morning when my kids woke up, to explain that, hey, we're going into lockdown, we're going to be hanging out together in our bubble. They now understand it. It's not a big discussion about what is COVID. It's not a big discussion about the fact that we're going to be doing things a little bit differently from a schooling perspective, that dad's gonna be home the whole time. So I'm just gonna get a drink of water. Things have shifted. Um, and in that new normal, it can be really hard to figure out how do you navigate that. And that's why I really love, um, I guess what Jesus talked about gives an awesome key um, to that in how we navigate um, and how we navigate. Hey, now church, I'm just going to take one second while we're live because um, I need to turn on. Are you there? Can you give me a wave if you're still there? Give me a reaction. Hello, hello, hello. Awesome. Hey, so sorry about that. So um, just fun fact, on my phone, um, I have a, um, an app restriction, <laughs> an app restriction that just means that you don't spend way too much on social media and I just got a notification to say that my phone was going to be turning off Facebook uh, within the next 10 minutes. That would have been an absolute shocker, but it's a good thing to have during the week so you don't spend too much time on social media just scrolling, scrolling and scrolling. Anyway. Where I was going was, um, you know, this passage about new wine is an awesome, uh, an awesome passage that helps us understand how we navigate, um, how we navigate these times. Uh, and, you know, as we talk about new wine, I just want to clarify for anyone who is joining us, who doesn't normally join us um, on a Sunday service, Inspire hasn't gone and um, purchased a vineyard or starting a new wine label. Um, this is a metaphor that Jesus used. Um, and it's in Luke 5. And just as a little bit of background, what happened is Jesus is at a party. How awesome. Jesus is at a celebration. There's this guy named Levi who had been a tax collector and um, his fellow countrymen absolutely hated tax collectors because what they were doing is they were taking the taxes from their own people and giving it to the Romans who uh, were occupying. And so um, they didn't like tax collectors, yet Jesus, when he passed him um, in the street, he saw him and he said, follow me. In other words, I choose you. In other words, I believe that I, you can do uh, what I can do. I want to partner with you in what I'm doing. He'd been preaching about bringing the kingdom of heaven. And um, I don't know about you guys if Jesus passed you and said that, but I would be like Levi too and leave everything and go. And so Levi is hosting this party to celebrate. It said there's all these other tax collectors and people there. Um, and this is to honor Jesus and um, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law and um, uh, those guys 
they're not into this idea. They're like, Jesus, what are you doing hanging out with all these sinners? So they start laying on the tough questions. And then immediately they begin to lay on more. And it's really challenging Jesus on his methods. So that's why Jesus begins uh, to, to um, address it, but also uh, talk in this metaphor. And we're going we're gonna, to um, pick it up here. It's Luke chapter 5. And it's from verse 37, and he says, And no one pours new wine into old wineskins, because if he does, the new wine will burst the skins, and the wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No, new wine must be poured into new wineskins. And what he's talking about in that moment is that God is doing something new. There is new wine. And the reason why wine as a metaphor was important is all through the Bible it's used. And, and, you know, some of its metaphor is to do about transformation. You know, if you think about it, taking grapes and turning it into wine, there's transformation that takes place. Um, new wine and wine speaks of celebration. Wine was part of all of their festivals and celebrations. Uh, wine spoke of this new covenant between God and people remember Jesus took the wine at the last supper and he says this is my blood poured out he talked about this new covenant this grace it was about salvation new wine spoke of what God was doing that he was doing something new and as a church we've taken this as a prophetic statement about the season that we're in that God is doing something new. But here was the challenge, that you can't put new wine into old wine skins. Now, wine skins speak of the method, how we carry that new wine. You know, Jesus was challenging them because they're, they're asking him about his methods and they're like, why doesn't it line up with all of our old Torah tradition? And, um, you know, why aren't you guys trying to pursue holiness? Why wouldn't you? Why are you guys hanging around those sinners? Like, you know, isn't that going to taint you or something like that? And in this moment, why aren't your disciples fasting like our disciples do? You know, they're so caught up in tradition and process and programs that they were missing that the new thing God was doing was around people. And so just like you can't take new wine that's expanding and fermenting and put it into old wine skins that are rigid or brittle and, and there's the chance that it bursts and the wine is spilled and ruined, just like you can't do that, it, we can't become rigid and so focused on process and programs and tradition that we forget that it's about people. And I love how pastors Don and Julia last week, they extended it into that thought of how we're like wineskins too, you know, and how are we carrying what God wants to do? Are we being rigid? Are we being old? Or are we staying fresh? Because I love how it says, no, new wine must be poured into new wineskins. And actually that word new there is slightly different to new wine and it means fresh. Guys, we need to be fresh. We need to be open. We need to be flexible. We need to be looking to what is the new thing God is doing and how can we carry that. So that's what we mean by new wine and fresh wineskins. Prophetically, God is doing something new. And what are those new methods and how can we be flexible and part of what God is doing? I mean, take this stream, for example. Who would have thought over a year ago that we would be live streaming our service, that we would be joining in from home? Not me. And I think it's so funny that we talked about in that season, this was about a new era. And it was so much more than how is God transforming our church community and our physical community around church. You know, I was always thinking about how we're in Albany, but, um, you know, God is working in and through us to influence um, the North Shore 
and the coast and and even because you know part of our church community you guys are in west auckland and city central and all over the place but no it's more than that it's more than walkworth i saw um helen chan come in it's more than walkworth um we're talking global we're talking about god influencing people across the world um, and how exciting that even though we, it might be difficult and challenging that we're doing this from home right now, uh, but this message is going to impact people around the world and it's going to impact our friends and our colleagues and our family. How awesome. Anyway, this challenge that Jesus was giving to the religious establishment of the day to be open to the new thing and to be mindful of being fresh carriers and it's about people this is something that echoes what guys has been saying all along through the word all the way from the very first chapter and i love that god um, loves to work with people to partner with people to work in and through to see people transformed and pastor don i think he picked it up last week you know echoed out of Isaiah 43, where God challenges Israel in the middle of exile. Essentially, exile is like being in the lockdown, but worse. Uh, essentially, in exile, um, he, uh, so I just hitting dismiss on a notification. He, he was challenging them around, um, behold, I am doing something new. Do you not perceive it or see it? It springs forth. And in that challenge, he's talking to um, Israel in exile who was waiting for God to move like he did before out of Egypt and bring along Moses. He was going to lead them out, lead them home to the promised land. But God's going, no, 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 I'm doing something new. Do you perceive it? And it was going to look different. It was going to be about salvation, but it was going to look different. And that challenge there is that we don't look to the past and how God has moved in the past to inform how he's going to move now, saying, you know, because he did it that way in the past, that's the only way he moves. No. New wine needs to be in fresh wine skins. Cool. So do we feel like we've had a good recap? We're talking about new wine, fresh wine skins. We're talking about... Um, a message of hope. We're talking about the kingdom. We're talking about what God is doing, how he's moving, how lives are being transformed. But it often comes through new methods. It often comes through us um, being fresh and not rigid and, and joining God and how he wants to do it. So we're now going to go to Luke 5. And I love Luke, the beginning of Luke 5 because it's a fishing story. And who loves a good fishing story? When I think of fishing, I think of um, this time that Devon and Ash and their kids stayed with Kim and I and our kids at Whangamata. So Kim's family has a batch there. And we all stayed there. And Devon invited me to come fishing with him. And he invited me to join a charter trip. Now, if you guys know Devin, you know he loves a good fishing charter, and he loves a good um, he loves a good um, fishing story. So anyway, I said no, um, and that was basically because we're going to have to get up at five a.m. Um, and head out, and we weren't going to get home until night time. Um, so I had said no, um, and he went anyway. And anyway, about 9 a.m., I think it was, I get a notification, and in comes this picture. Can you guys see that? What a whopper of a fish. And that, that's not photoshopped. How crazy. That is not photoshopped. And Devin's like, you are missing out right now. And then he proceeded to send me more photos of the day um, of other people catching fish just like that. And then he brought it home and we ate it. Um, and the reason I have this on a magnet is because Devin printed it and gave it to us to put on our fridge 
so that I would never ever forget <laughs> the time he asked me, I said no and I should have gone. Anyway, incredible fishing experience with Devon, I obviously missed out. Well, in Luke 5, we have an even better fishing story. So, I'm going to read it, and then as we go through this, we're going to just pull bits out, um, and then we'll talk about what it means for us and our now, okay? So, uh, we're going to go to Luke 5. If you've got your Bibles, we're starting in the first verse here. And it says, one day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, uh, basically it's the Sea of Galilee, um, with the people crowning around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats, okay, two boats, left there by fishermen who were washing their nets. So obviously... Um, he's got a crowd there. He sees two boats. They're crowding all around him. It's hard to stand there and speak. Um, and these guys have obviously finished fishing because they're washing their nets. And so it says he jumped, got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put it a little out from shore. And there he sat down and taught the people from the boat. So Jesus, quick thinking, he, um, he sees the boat, jumps in, takes it out, um, and now he's essentially got a floating stage. Pretty cool. Everyone crowding on the beach to listen. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for the catch. And Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the net. So it turns out these guys have been fishing. They're washing the nets, but they hadn't caught anything. And here's Jesus saying, let's head out now. I finished speaking and put your nets down. A couple of things for us to understand. This was an impossible situation. A, they've already tried. They've caught nothing. B, it was daytime and not night time. Why is that important? Okay, they didn't have nets, like the nets you're probably thinking of where it's clear nylon and um, you know, it's, it's, it's all um, tied together and as it goes through the water, hopefully the fish don't see the nylon and they're caught in it. No, their fishing nets were basically giant, uh, made out of um, giant linen. So uh, fishing at night time meant that it was less likely that the fish would see this linen versus the day. Also, Jesus tells them to take the boat out into the deep. Their fishing style was more in the shallows. So again, day versus night, deep versus shallow, and they've already tried and there's nothing. They've got nothing and Jesus is like, Let's head out. But what I love is Simon's response. You know, it's all too easy when we feel God speaking to us or leading us to tell God in an impossible situation that it's impossible. But God, what God wants you to do is to trust him. So wherever you are, whatever situation you're in, if you're feeling God leading you and in the natural, you're like, it doesn't make sense. Trust him. Have faith. And I love how Simon answers with master. You see at this point, Jesus is at the beginning of his ministry. This is when he's beginning to call people to follow him. Yet Simon would have heard the stories, would have heard the message. He would have heard about Jesus driving out evil spirits and healing people and, and um, restoring the broken and restoring the social outcasts. And, and, you know, there is an element of honor here where he goes, master. So good. Anyway, they do what he says. Um, and so it says, um, so when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. Imagine that your nets are breaking 
and literally hours before there is nothing. This is a miracle. This is not normal. I mean, if Devon's fish doesn't look normal here, um, I think I saw Ash say, say in the comments that it's basically a dolphin um, <laughs> that big. Um, how much more like crazy and impossible is it that these nets are all breaking? And so they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. Just imagine that picture of these nets are breaking and they're hauling them in and they're calling out to the other boat and they're hauling in the fish and the boats are beginning to sink and they're trying to make their way back to shore. That is the size of the catch. This is an absolute miracle. Now, um, they, it's, they basically make it to shore and, and it says that Simon Peter saw this and he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch. I think that's an understatement, astonished. At the catch of the fish that they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. These are, you'll recognize these names later because they um, become disciples of Jesus. And then it says, Jesus says to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. And so they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. Now, I don't know if you guys are like me, but one of the first questions I have, still like at the miracle part with this boat sinking, is how much would that be worth? What is the size of this miracle? Because remember, they're fishing. This isn't fun. This isn't um, Devin jumping on a charter fishing trip for fun. This is their business. This is their livelihood. That's why they would have been so gutted when um, they didn't have anything. And how cool that God cared about that moment, right? That God knew that they had come up empty and after just using their boat as a floating stage, he's like, okay, we're gonna bring a miracle. So how much was this worth? Well, I'm glad you've asked. Um, I'm also glad that there's a university that did a study to work it out. And basically, what they did is they found, um, there's a boat called the Jesus Boat, and you can find this easily online, where archeologists found a similar fishing style boat from the Sea of Galilee from the time of Jesus. And so they took the boat, um, they worked out weight, they worked out displacement, they worked out, you know, you've got those fishermen on there, you've got, um, you know, what, how much fish would have to be on there to get the boats to start sinking. Um, they looked at around the time, uh, you know, what was uh, fish going for, you know, if I was selling it as a business. Um, and so they came up with a range of estimates because, of course, we're talking about 2,000 years ago, so you've got to take the best guess you can. I'm going to go with the low estimate. Are you guys ready to hear what size catch this was and how much it was worth? Give me a reaction if you're ready. This, this is the low estimate. This is awesome. 12 to 24, and I'm not saying thousand, years wages. Isn't that crazy? 12 to 24 years wages worth of catch worth of business that is making bank that is why they're astonished that is why peter not just going what a good catch fell on his knees and instead of calling jesus master you know like some people go hey boss or you know hey sir or show respect he changes he shifted and he's like lord <laughs> he noticed his sinfulness he noticed that obviously what Jesus is talking about himself and these miracles is true, that he is God incarnate, that he um, is incredibly good, that all of this is true. 
How incredible that God cared about him and his business partners enough to bring a miracle like that. That blows my mind. No wonder, as Jesus says, don't be afraid because from now on, and he takes this natural miracle and starts talking about it in a spiritual sense about catching men, they were just like, we're going with you. We're going to leave everything bef- behind. Like they were set up, ready to go. And, and what I love about this story is a couple of things. So number one, God will use whatever you have in your hands. Okay? God will use whatever you have in your hands. Um, these guys had a boat and a fishing net. But what he does is he loves to step into an impossible situation and bring a miracle as he partners with people. And we see that time and time again. I love, you know, you've got this story. It's a net and a boat and God provides the miraculous catch. You've got you might remember that, um, that story in, um, in the Old Testament about the prophet and the woman and there's a famine and she's got nothing and he says, bring as many jars as you can find and God's going to fill it with oil. And she did and it got them right through that period. I mean, I think about that boy who had the fish and the bread, enough for his own lunch. And Jesus says, we need some food. And the disciples bring him and, 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 and um, he takes that fish in the bread and he, and he prays and it feeds 5,000. What was in his hands? A fish and some bread. What's in your hands? I love, um, you know, at Pentecost, you got Peter, who is, you know, Simon, his name changes to Peter. Same guy, him and a few believers. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. God is transforming their life. And Peter just gets up. And what does he have in his hands? Nothing. But he's got a message. And he shares the message. And 5,000 are saved, are transformed in that moment. And it says, are added to the number of believers. A message. And what is in your hands? You know, God may have gifted you with a talent. And all he's asking is for you to use that. Maybe it's an impossible situation and to have faith that God will bridge the gap with a miracle. Maybe it, it, doesn't, it doesn't even have to be a gift or a talent. Maybe just God's given something to you, uh, provided for you to be able to step into a gap. Uh, maybe it's time. Like I love, some of you guys have heard this story before where um, it was near the end of last year um, and I was meant to be meeting with some people and it got cancelled and I had a moment. Um, I think I had about two hours to kill and I just said, God, how can I best use this two hours? And immediately I got a message from somebody and through that message, I connected with them, got to meet with them, got to hear the crazy story of what God had begun to do in their life and then begin to share with them and encourage them in what God was doing and um, help encourage them in, in how to progress and, and to, how to dive into the Bible and how to pray about things and, and, and where to get good input and to find a church. You know, God used that moment what I had in my hand, some time to be able to, to speak into someone's life. God, partnering with people to see transformation in people's lives. Maybe it's time. How good. Maybe you are so worried at the moment about your business um, or how you're going to make ends meet. Trust him. He cares about every little detail. God loves opportunities to step in and to bring a miracle and i want to encourage you this morning what is in your hands what can you bring how can you look at this moment differently and not see an impossible situation or not see here we go level three again but go god is what is the thing that you are doing right now help me see it how can i be part of it because God is transforming lives 
And I love the season that we're in, new wine. God is doing something new and we get to be part of it. And let's be like Isaiah. I love it. I think it's Isaiah 6 where he says, here I am, send me. And let that be our prayer in this moment right now. God, in what you're doing in our community, here I am, send me. God, in what you're doing in my life, here I am. What an opportunity we have right now. And just on that, I just really feel to pray, actually. And the reason I feel to pray is... um, Yeah, I can't help but think, you know, this isn't even in my notes, but I just can't help but think, you know, like Simon and his partners, as they're washing washing their nets, they probably couldn't even really focus on what Jesus was saying. They were probably discouraged. Uh, They possibly were frustrated and angry. And what Jesus was saying was going in one ear and out the other. And we've all been there. And I love how um, God understands that. And that's what I love about the Gospels is we have this so we can understand the heart of God and understand how God likes to work and likes to talk. And, um, you know, Jesus addressed that need first and that provision first before that next step of them stepping out and, and beginning that journey with Jesus and following him and Um, I just really want to pray with you right now if you feel like that is you. Because no doubt right now as as people are watching, they're they're going to be people like that. Who You're right now, you're so caught up in um, what's going on in your life that you're finding it hard to hear God. So let's pray for that. So, um, you know, Inspire Family, even from your own homes, you can join in and pray too, okay? But Lord, I want to lift up every person right now who is listening to this message and you are finding it hard because you have found yourself in an impossible situation where um, you are just finding it hard to hear the voice of God or you are just filled with so much worry or stress or maybe it's discouragement or maybe it's frustration. Maybe it's as silly as we are in alert level three and you're like, not again, how am I going to get through this week? And God, I pray that right now in this moment, that for each person, they would experience your peace and they would experience your grace and your hope that God, that you would open their eyes to see the opportunity or the thing in their hands that you are going to use. And Lord, I pray that you would bring provision God, just as you've shown before with a catch that was more than enough, more than enough to supply. Lord, I pray that you would show yourself that you are the God of more than enough. You are the God of the impossible, that you wouldn't just address the need, that you would provide more than enough. Because I thank you, God, that time and time again, all through the word, as you show that you give more than enough, It's not only about the person, but it's about blessing others and being able to overflow. And I pray that out of these moments, that people would experience not only what it is to receive supply, but to be able to overflow that supply and see other lives transformed, being able to partner with you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Sorry, I just felt like I had to do that in that moment. Um, But... You know, maybe also, hey, you know, why we're in this moment. What I loved with what Jesus was saying to the religious establishment of the day was it wasn't around trying to be perfect. Uh, This wasn't around process or programs. It was around people. And what they were missing was they were so focused on how do you live a perfect life. They were so focused on doing the right things getting fasting right, uh, making sure you're hanging around with the right people so that you don't get, I don't know, like tainted in some way, that they miss that the gospel's about people. And this new wine was no longer around whether you are perfect versus not perfect, righteous versus um, unrighteous. It was about are you taking steps towards Jesus 
or are you taking steps away from Jesus? And that's a scary question when you go, am I taking steps towards Jesus? The Pharisees wouldn't have liked that. Am I taking steps towards Jesus or away from Jesus? Um, And I want to encourage you in this moment. Maybe you are sitting there going, you know, I feel the call of God or I know that God wants to work in and through me or, um, you know, I feel the tug of God. But you're like, man... I um, I just need to get perfect or I need to sort these things out first um, before I come to him. I want to encourage you that like Levi, like all of these guys who weren't actually perfect before Jesus chose them, that God will meet you where you're at. That God will meet you where you are at, but what he won't do is leave you where you're at. He will transform your life. He will draw you closer to himself. He will work in you and through you to sort out these things, these struggles, these challenges, these, um, you know, when we talk about sin, sin is basically falling short of God's perfect um, plan and and purpose. And and we do dumb things um, that, that hurt God and, and we do dumb things that hurt others and, and God will take you and meet you where you're at, but he won't leave you where you're at. And I want to encourage you in this moment. Hey, you're listening and you're like, God, I need to stop trying to do this thing on my own. I need you make the most of this opportunity right now. Maybe you even want to pray this prayer with me and um, what I like to do is, you know, put your hand just over your heart because the heart is almost like the seat of your emotions and, and over the, the seat of, you know, who, who do we love and, and, and pray this prayer with me and just pray this. Dear Lord Jesus, I want to thank you that you meet me where I'm at. I want to thank you for the cross that through your sacrifice and through what you were doing made a way that I could be made right, that I could be accepted and I could have life and life abundantly. I want to thank you for your grace and I want to thank you for your forgiveness And Lord, I pray that each day that you would lead me on this journey. In Jesus' name, amen. And I want to encourage you, if you made that prayer, reach out to us. But I want to encourage you that each day we wake up, we make a decision towards Jesus. And it's the most exciting life you can ever have as God works in you to transform you and through you. And finally want to encourage you on this journey inspire family let's take what's in our hands okay and let god use it let's not freak out going it's not a lot maybe you're sitting there going i'm not as talented as somebody else or i don't have as much money as somebody else to be able to invest in what in the kingdom and what god's doing let's just take what we've got and let's invest it it might be a Um, a a word of encouragement to somebody this week maybe it is um, maybe it's being able to support somebody who's gonna struggle this week off business uh, you know outside of work or something like that let's be reaching out and and loving others and let's be looking for opportunities for God to partner with us I mean even in this moment I'm thinking you know that catch that happened that is more than the money that's left on our building how awesome is that that you know in a moment god can bring supply that is more than we need so um i don't know even if you're listening and and you are passionate and feel called to be someone who invests in and resources the kingdom believe for supply and overflow so that you can do more if god can do something like that he can do it again That's what I love and want to encourage you. Let's use the past to spur us in faith towards the future. 
Uh, let's not just look to the past thinking that's the only way he moves. Let's not look to the past thinking he's done it. I don't know if he can do it again. No, let it inspire faith into your future. Awesome. Well, I feel like God has lifted my faith as um, I've been speaking and I pray that God has lifted your faith. Um, I pray that Inspire Family, this would be an incredible week for you, that this would be a week of opportunity, that this would be a week that you would hear God's voice like you haven't heard it before, that as you open your Bible, that God would speak to you, as you pray, that God would speak to you, that He would give you opportunities um, also to partner with Him to see lives transformed because that's what He loves to do. Also, just as a... um, I guess, a public service announcement. Obviously, with seven days of level three, there is no physical events happening this week. So anything that was in the church calendar is paused. Life groups, um, you guys are going to be meeting online, whether it's Zoom or however you do that. Talk to your iGroup leader. Um, And then in the next couple of days, We will let you know what's happening, obviously, as we find out more. Um, One of the key things I've learned, this is, this we've done this before, is not to stress out, you know, as we hear more, we're able to plan and to move with that. So the the main thing is not to stress, um, but to see this as an opportunity, not to get caught up in being frustrated with being locked at home, but see this as an opportunity. Families, It's going to be hard trying to do um, work at home and juggle all those things. Be okay with that. Take moments to hang out with as a family and to celebrate. Um, And if you are on your own, reach out. We want to know. You can private message us on the Facebook page um, because there's nothing like maybe you just want a messenger call or a Zoom call or something. We'd love to do that. Love to reach out. Um, Church, if there is any needs, reach out. Remember, we are better together. And as a church, we want to be there for you. Love you guys. Awesome to see you all. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you, Megan. You guys are all absolute champions. Um, Have an incredible Sunday. And we will definitely... Uh, talk during the week and looking forward to next weekend too whether uh, you know we're gathering the same way or slightly different have a blessed week